Hello everyone, my name is Asisi Pombingilele and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video guys, we'll be answering the female reproductive system question from a previous national question paper. This particular question was from the November 2024 Life Sciences uh, Paper 1 question paper. Alright, let us not waste time guys, let us look at this question. Please do watch the video till the end, guys. I honestly break down the question for you to make it um, simpler and easier for you to understand. And I explain the answers. So please do watch the video till the end. Okay, so 2.1, the diagram below represents a part of the female reproductive system. This is very obvious because we can see the different structures. We can see the ovaries, we can see the fallopian tube, and we can see the uterus. We don't have the full diagram or structure of the uterus, but we can see that we are given the uterine lining, which is the endometrium. Let us look at the questions, guys. Identify part A, easy peasy. There is part A. Today I feel like losing, losing which one? Red, red, orange. Okay, let's use that one. So part A is the fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. All right. Or oviduct, but I mean, fallopian tube. We're in metric. Okay. Then B, there is part B. So this is, this is part B. This whole part over here. That is obviously the ovary, easy peasy stuff. Now these one mark questions, guys, you cannot be getting them wrong. You cannot be getting them wrong. It should really be easy for you at this stage to identify the different parts of any structure that you are given. Give two, that's two and two, give two characteristics of the endometrium that make it suitable for implantation that make it suitable for implantation. Remember, implantation, this is when the blastula or blastocyst embeds itself into this uterine lining to confirm pregnancy. The marker location is true for the two characteristics. So you can say that the endometrium is thick. It is thick to obviously house this growing um, fetus. You can also say it is glandular. You can also say it is vascular, meaning it has a rich blood supply. So they've just asked for two. You don't need to answer all three options. You just answer two only, please. Okay, I sometimes forget to, to basically give ticks to the answers so that you know exactly how we mark these questions. Sometimes I forget I'm human, I'm human, I'm human, I'm human. Okay, <laughs> let's continue. Don't mind me, guys. Let's continue. Give two visible, v -v -v visible reasons why there is an increased chance of fertilization in this particular female. From the diagram that you are given, what are the two visible reasons? Why you think there's an increased chance of fertilization in this female? Two reasons. This is obvious. Remember, if we were to maybe explain what fertilization is, it's basically when the nucleus of the sperm cell fuses with the nucleus of the egg. Actually, I shouldn't be saying sperm cell. Nucleus of the sperm fuses with the nucleus of the egg. So it's that. The increased chances of that particular process taking place um, is basically because ovulation has taken place. We are able to see that the mature ovum has been released from the graphene follicle. This is exactly what we're seeing. That's the first thing. That obviously increases the chances of fertilization. The second thing that we're able to see is that the sperm cells are present in the fallopian tube because in order for fertilization to take place we need the ovum to be available in the in the fallopian tube together with the sperm in order for fertilization to take place that's exactly your answer guys so that's your answer the vis two visible reasons i'm going to write them this side let's see oh i'm going to need that space so let me write them here 
So the first option, or the first answer, ovulation has taken place. The second answer, sperm cells are available uh, in the fallopian tube. Sperm cell or just sperm um, available. Where are they available? Wow. In the fallopian tube. You get your two marks. You get your two marks. We're talking about ovulation has um, occurred. And the sperm cell is available in the fallopian tube. If you don't want to say ovulation has occurred, you can mention that the ovum has been released. So it's the same thing. You can say that the ovum has been released from the ovary. You will also get a mark for that. Six marks. Two and three. Six marks. You are not skipping this question in an exam. The six marks, you are not skipping it. Please. You attempt to answer, and this is a copy and paste from the exam guidelines, guys. These type of questions are questions that you really need to find a way of understanding. Find a way of understanding or remembering these points because this thing of you guys leaving empty spaces, when you see a question with a marker location of four to six, you're like, ah, this one is not for me. It is for you to answer. That's why it's in the question paper. It's for you, my darling, to answer it. And we are going to answer it together in this video. All right, we don't skip questions here. Now, this is a two-part question. It says, identify, then there's an end. So that means this is the first part of the question we need to identify. After we identify, we describe. That's the second part. We describe the type of gametogenesis that leads to the formation of structure C. We need to identify the type of gametogenesis that leads to the formation of structure C. Structure C is the ovum. And we need to describe that particular type of gametogenesis. Remember with gametogenesis, you have spermatogenesis that forms the sperm. Then you have oogenesis that forms the ova. So the one that we are identifying is the second one that I've mentioned. So that is oogenesis. So I'm going to write it somewhere here because I want to have space. Let me see. Yeah, I want to have space. So the first mark will be for identifying oogenesis. That's the process. That's the gametogenesis. Right? Then you have to describe that process for five marks. So you've got six marks. One mark will be for identifying and five marks will be for the process. Now, this is a copy and paste from the exam guidelines. Diploid cells in the ovary undergo mitosis. So you will have diploid cells in the ovary and these cells will undergo mitosis. This is a you guys. Undergo mitosis. Okay, then they will undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles. They will undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles. Then during puberty, during puberty or at the onset of puberty, let's actually write it like that because that's how they say it uh, in the exam guideline. At the onset of puberty, at the onset of puberty, during adolescent stage. And this will obviously happen under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone. Under the influence of FSH, that's the follicle stimulating hormone. Now, this hormone will obviously be secreted by the pituitary gland. There's no need for you to mention all of that. It will be secreted by the pituitary gland, then travel to the ovaries. Now, this FSH is going to stimulate one of the follicles, right? One of the follicles to start enlarging and undergoing meiosis. So, what we're going to say. Is that one cell? We 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 one cell inside a follicle, a 
follicle will enlarge and undergo meiosis, which is a cell division process, right? So it will undergo uh, meiosis. Remember in meiosis, one cell divides in two meiotic divisions to form four cells at the end, which are genetically different. That's, that's okay, that's not the point for this particular process, but right. So we'll undergo meiosis to form those four cells, but of the four cells, out of the four cells that are going to be produced, of the four cells that are produced, only one, only one of those four cells will survive only one of those cells will survive to form a mature ovum Whew. mature haploid i would say the word haploid is important haploid ovum ah! let's see how this will be marked i'll have to use a, a darker uh, pen so compulsory mark for oogenesis. That's the first mark, right? Then five marks for the process. Diploid cells in the ovary undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles at the onset of puberty under the influence of FSH. One cell inside the follicle will enlarge and undergo meiosis. Of the four cells that are produced, only one is going to survive to form a haploid over you do not skip these questions at all this is all if you skip these questions is guys even if you shall eat cream pass for good on calling you sugar cool but even if you shall eat cream pass forget do that oh genesis no spermatogenesis by a babuza a cool so yeah all right let's answer the last question in an ectopic pregnancy, the fertilized ovum can become implanted in part A. Uh, let's remind ourselves what part A is, the fallopian tube, okay. So in an ectopic pregnancy, the fertilized ovum um, can become implanted in part A. This normally results in the death of the embryo and may endanger the mother's life. So during this pregnancy, ectopic, um, the ovum can become implanted um, in part A. Obviously, the ovum will need to be fertilized to form the zygote, then the morula, then the blastula or blastocyst, then implantation uh, will happen. Remember, normal implantation takes place in the endometrium. So they are basically saying here, this implantation then may happen in the fallopian tube. And this results um, in the death of the embryo. So the embryo might or will die, actually. And this can also endanger the mother's life. Explain three marks. You are also not skipping this kind of a question. Okay? Explain why an ectopic pregnancy may result in the death of the embryo. Why? Explain why this type of pregnancy may result in the death of this particular embryo. Now, remember part A is the fallopian tube and part A is not adapted to house an embryo. Remember the endometrium is adapted to house an embryo because it is thick, because it is glandular, because it is vascular. Now, there's also, I realize I'm going to waste time explaining uh, that, but yeah, let's just answer the question. So the fallopian tube... So the fallopian tube is unable is unable to provide the space. The fallopian tube is unable to provide the space, and there is there is no blood supply there. Blood supply. There. Remember, in the endometrium, there is a blood supply. There is no blood supply to basically provide nutrients. 
nutrients, oxygen, or even to remove waste products. To provide nutrients in order for the embryo to develop. So 